Dropships. Dropships are a significant portion of CIG's vision for the future, shall we say. There have been so many dropships added to the game uh, that it has it has become all, it's at the verge of becoming a meme to uh, you know next time there's a sale it's like we don't know what we're gonna you know we're gonna bring out everybody guess and it's like a uh, dropship <laughs> I mean we're getting to that point and things have gotten fairly ridiculous lately with the advent of the cutlass steel now I want to I want to make something clear because there there are some people who think that this you know because it's a it's a cutlass I was automatically going to get it. Why would I have the redeemer? I should you know I should get the Drake cutlass steel. I should trade it up or trade side side grade it or downgrade it or whatever into the cutlass steel. The cutlass steel it's got it's got waist guns on it and it's got all the jump seats in it. It's Oh, it's awesome, and it's Drake, man. It's Drake. It's Drake. Yeah, it's, all these things are fine. But there's a problem with this. The Drake Cutlass, it, as it is, at its core, is a fantastic ship for those that know how to use it. The Drake Cutlass, for a new player who wants to get into a good ship somewhere cheap, that and the Freelancer are your... You're only two real starting points in the Star Citizen universe as far as I'm concerned. They're the ships that can do everything. I prefer the Cutlass over the Freelancer, but there are many Freelancer proponents out there and they do have a point. I will admit that. I prefer the Cutlass. The Cutlass is just a little bit faster and I dig it for those reasons. It's a great evasive little f freighter potential as a fighter if needs be but it's kind of a jack of all trades master of none it's a fantastic ship but a drop ship it ain't okay so for those of you who are fans of the episodes where i get a little bit antagonistic and a little bit loud this is going to be one of those episodes because when i saw this I just was flabbergasted by how stupid the idea was. I love the cutlass, the waist guns, that's cool. That's a cool idea. Something to put on the regular cutlass, you know, as an add-on or something like that. But making a cutlass as a dropship is entirely stupid. You might be sitting there going, oh man, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? A dropship, one of the things that a dropship has to do is it has to drop troopers into a combat area. Now, if you were going up against just infantry, you're in a, you're, you're in a situation where it's reasonable to expect the ship to do the job. But against a base, against hardened defenses, no, shoulder mounted missiles, shoulder mounted rail guns, friggin ballistas out there, you know, AA friggin jeeps in Star Citizen, all of this nonsense. The Cutlass is not a damage taker. Now this is largely because of CIG has taken on the idea Though it really isn't something that was out, outwardly stated about Drake ships. They were rough built, but they were never built to be flimsy. But CIG has decided to make most Drake ships fairly not robust. Let's put it that way. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you're getting together with 18 of your friends and you're about to drop them all into combat... And the best that anybody in your group of friends can muster up is a frickin' cutlass? You've got bigger problems, buddy. You've got bigger friggin' problems. The biggest thing about these ground missions is you've got to survive to hit the ground. And I'm sorry, man, but the cutlass is not that ship unless you plan to drop them 
two or three kilometers away from the objective and ask them to walk it in. Now, if you're dropping like a stealth friggin' mission or it's like the first Predator movie or you're like you're dropping your infantry out there in the boonies and they got to hoof it in and that's the, you know, that's the mission profile that you guys have come up with. Cool, cool, cool. That the the cutlass steel is right up your alley. But unless you want to be doing the <laughs> <laughs> the bizarre star citizen power walk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I know they put so much effort into these animations, but from certain angles, they just <laughs> from a lot of angles, they look really bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. They do. They do. Um, it just. I don't know. <laughs> I. I. I whatever okay <laughs> moving on yeah but in in those limited situations the drake cutlass deal makes sense it really does and so it's not entirely completely without purpose in star citizen if you were to drop an elite group of infantry somewhere far away from the objective and they have to work their way in but the truth of it is is you can do that with any other drop ship but the other dropships give you the option of being able to hang in a firefight and deploy a lot more firepower to support your troops on the ground. The Cutlass Steel just is not that ship. And I mean, if you think about it, chewing through somebody and the, and their Cutlass gets you the 18 people in the jump seats plus the turret operator, the pilot and co-pilot. 21 kills for one cutlass i mean damn dude uh, do you really want to put all your eggs in that one not so resilient basket i mean think about it yeah i mean some people are gonna sit there and say oh man it's like the huey you know the huey back in nam man you know th that's how they got the troops in and it, to this day, it's still a way that they drop troops into the area, but usually the area is fairly pacified or free of resistance. You're not going into an area where there may be SAMs or AA guns spread out all over the place. You're generally using those things to move troops out ahead of the enemy and block them or get them somehow behind the enemy and attack them from the rear. You're using those things to surprise an enemy. You're not attacking a hardened installation with these things and that really is the big problem with the cutlass steel is it's there there are good ideas there but realistically its use is fairly limited and it's just i i get what cig is trying to do and i want to i want to applaud the fact that they're trying to reuse older ships to get more bang for your buck when they're developing the game and to get more things out there quicker i i applaud the effort in that direction however this is a bad idea it's a bad idea to buy it and it was a bad idea to make it now for waste guns we could have just gotten a little add-on that you could have clipped onto your cutlass a little modularity that just flipped that on so you could use that that would have been great but ultimately it's just not a good idea you wouldn't want to put that many troops in a ship that is not as as resilient as it could or should be something like a redeemer something something that has some real teeth that can really chew things up and take a bit of a beating that's what you want to put your ground troops in on and i mean at the point you might say oh yeah but this this carries so much more so many more ground troops but you know what honestly if you have that many troops to put on the ground you're going to use something far more substantial than a cutlass so i applaud the intent but the, the result is n not what it should be. And this is another case of, I, I really feel that there needs to be a little bit of 
review of Star Citizen's designs, and I think, I'm sorry to say this, but it, it has to be outside of the CIG circle. And not people who are just going to be like, oh yeah, you go get them, what a great design. But people who will actually look at these things with a critical eye, who understand the game, who understand what the game is going to become and not just what the game is supposed to be but what the game is actually angling towards and who can sit there and say you know in the future this is going to be a big problem or in the future this is not going to work the way you intend it to work you know you have to have some players with a critical eye out there to kind of you know put a pause on things every once in a while and say is this really what you intend but even as I say that, we all know that in the end, though we might idealize a situation like that being perfect, it, it would never work because there's nobody you could appoint to any kind of citizens council that CIG, you know, wouldn't get flack for. I mean, it's not like I would get put up there. It's not, you know, nobody like me would be, would even think of wanting to go up there because everybody would just start screaming some kind of privilege and that would be that so i think that ultimately cig really i think i don't know maybe internally there needs to be a little bit more i don't want to use the word dissent but a little bit more of a critical eye and not just the worst one of the worst things that you can do as a business is have the affirmation handshake club which is like hey if you back up my idea i'll back up your idea hey your idea is great keep shooting for those stars hey buddy thanks you too blah blah you know when everybody is kissing everybody else's ass it's very easy to forget what shit smells like the th one of the biggest problems as a game developer is, is that you're going to you're going to get a lot of negative feedback and you can kind of choose to kind of push that out of your orbit and just not pay attention to it but you kind of have to because at the end of the day these are the people who are going to pay your paycheck and buy your product so it's a balancing act but you kind of got to be open to these things and when you got to produce something in the blind and not consult with the player base on it throughout the entirety of its production and then just spring it on the player base and be like hey here's a bad idea what do you think you have to be ready to get flamed for it and i think that maybe a, a, a middle of the road idea would be as designs are kind of being floated around as ideas are moving from paper to digital reality Maybe there is room in that process for a pause and a consult with the community. You don't have to listen to everybody. You can kind of still pick and choose, but you might pick a few gems out of all of that and say, oh, you know what? That's actually kind of a good point. And maybe that's the fairest and easiest way to do it is not to have a community council, but to just kind of consult with the community before you publicly shit the bed. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, uh, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.